Welcome. This is your Cyber Recon Security Plus preparation course. We're going to be talking about comparing and contrasting types of attacks, domain 1.2 types of attacks, jumping into wireless, looking at WEP, and the problems with IV. So let's jump right into it. We'll jump to the slide deck and we'll talk about what's going on with WEP, which was the early privacy protection, early encryption, some of the problems with it, and it's still out there. So we have to be aware as security professionals, we got to be aware of this thing. Wired Equivalent Privacy, or WEP, was one of the initial encryption protocols or programs put in place to protect us. Metric key, it uses metric key, and that means everyone has the same key. And we'll see the problem with that, right? Initially, the encryption key length was required to be 64 bits. It was a later increase to 128 bits, which, which was still way too small to make this thing secure as it was designed. And we'll see that. So it had a thing called an initialization vector that was added to protect the encryption key. And that was 24 bits. And the IV was actually part of the key size. So if you had initially, like in 1999, we had a 64-bit requirement. Couldn't be longer than that. And, and part of that 64 bits was this IV, or this initialization vector. That means your key size, your encryption key size, could only be 40 bits. And even when we increased that to 128 bits, that meant your key size could be 104 bits. And we'll see even with that, it wasn't quite strong enough the way this thing was designed, right? So again, symmetric key, when we looked at uh, the, the session key that everyone used to connect to the network, uh, it was a symmetric key, which means that if we look at our access point up there, its name, you know, it's, it's, its web key is Tunican. That means when Alice connected, she had to use a web key of Tunican. Bob used the web key of Tunican. And Charlie used the web key of Tunican. Everybody used that same web key. And I know that's a crazy web key, but... Uh, just wanted to make the point. Everyone uses So if you had 100 users and one of them left, uh, you would have to change that session key on everyone's computer and on the access point. So obviously that made, made it pro a problem. And the fact that everyone used the same key meant that it was, was a little bit more vulnerable as that key transitioned the network because everyone used the same one. So let's look at a little bit how this process works when we're using this IV, what the IV actually does for us, right? We're gonna say Alice is gonna send some traffic across the network, right? So she starts out and she's got a data packet, which is, is shown at the top there, and a CRC or a cyclic uh, redundancy check. And that just makes sure that the data is correct, right? So it's a, it's a mathematical function on the data to give it a value so that we can check on the other end to make sure that the data is correct. That's packaged together, that's made into one group the data and the CRC. And then on the other side, on the on the the, the wireless protocol side, on the, on the kind of the web side, we have our web key, which we know in this case is Tunican. And then we have an, an initialization vector, and that's gonna provide some, what, what they call equivalent to salting, right? So it's gonna add some value to the key so it doesn't look the same every time that it goes across the network. So the IV and the web key are, are kind of put together and they're kind of munged. <laughs> and there's a, it's not very a technical term, but the IV allows the web key to be uh, changed a bit or salted. So those kind of are put together. And then they're run through the actual encryption logarithm. And this one, in this case, it's RC4. And that results in a key stream. So our key stream is, is that data encrypted. The web key and the initialization vector has been encrypted with this, this process RC4. Now we have two kind of sides of this. We're gonna put them together in a process called XORing, and that's gonna combine the data and then the key stream, and it's gonna result in an encrypted transmission going across the wireless network. So. We have ciphertext getting ready to go across the wireless network. And now one of the big problems with this is that we had to also send the initialization vector with the ciphertext because that's gonna be a value that changes. And at the receiving end, they're gonna need that to be able to decrypt or go back through this process backwards. So we have to append the IV in plain text to the ciphertext that's going across the network. 
So that's one of our first problems. Now we've got the initialization vector in plain text with our ciphertext going across the network. And there it goes off, shooting off across the network. So when we look at the, the IV, it's 24 bits long. There could be a little over 16 million different possibilities, right? 16,777,216 different IV possibilities. Um, if we go through that number, then of course, that will be the largest number that will ever happen before an IV is repeated. Some of these IV values are actually weaker than other IV values. And we can use a math process to reverse this and determine the encryption key. So all we need is to push a large volume of data across the wireless network, and then we can figure out these IVs and we can figure out the encryption key, especially if we can get IV values to repeat, and if they're the weak IV values, then we'll more easily be able to break the encryption key, break the web key, and figure out what the actual encryption key is, right? And we can use automated tools to make this relatively quick. So we can make this a lot faster using some automated tools all right, to do this. And we'll see that with something like disassociation attacks and replay attacks, things like that that will drive traffic up across the network. And that's what the, the, the bad guy, the, the attacker, is going to try to do. They're going to try to send a large volume of data across the network. Each time packets go across the network, they're going to have a different IV. And, and really, as soon as we get to 15 or 20,000 different packets with different IVs, that's normally the, the range we need to be in to start getting repeated IV values. And if we can repeat those weak ones, even better. And, and remember, this isn't done manually. A lot of times this is done, I think almost exclusively, this is done with tools that will help you do this. So you can push a lot of data across the network and then you can use that data to break the web key. That's why most new access points will not even allow you to use web because it's so relatively insecure. So when we're talking about this, when, when you're thinking about what you need to know for the exam, web is wired equivalent privacy. Web uses metric keys the web key is either going to be 64 or 128 bits long. Uh, the IV is part of that bit length. The IV is the initialization vector. The IV is 28 bits long. Possible numbers of IV values is 16.7 million. You know, compare that. And the IV is attached to the ciphertext in plain text, making it fairly a fairly weak protocol. So know these things. Good to know this. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, wireless obviously more but this is the this is dipping your toe into it understand web understand the initialization vector the iv understand why they can be a problem you know this is technology that's still used today there are people out there still using maybe older access points that have web or access points that still have web built into them so if you can avoid it don't use web use some of the more modern processes and we'll talk about those so as always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when new content is coming out. And I'd love to see your comments below. And we will see you next time. Be safe out there.